I'm going to show you the easy way to do full electron configuration as well as valence electron configuration without having to memorize anything. Before we get started, let's refresh on a few things in the periodic table so that we can use it to easily determine electron configuration. The energy levels directly correspond with the periods on the periodic table. Energy level 1 is period 1, energy level 2 is period 2, energy level 3 is period 3, energy level 4 is period 4, and 5, 6, 7. These are the coefficients in electron configuration. The energy levels are also referred to as the electron shells. As the energy level increases in number, 1, 2, 3, and so on, the energy shell increases in size. The electron shells can have one or more subshells, which are referred to as the S, P, D, and F subshells. The higher energy level electron shells tend to have more than one subshell. The S subshell has one orbital, and only two electrons can fit in any orbital, so one times two electrons equals two total electrons in any subshell. The P subshell has three orbitals, and remember, only two electrons can fit in each orbital, so two times three equals six total electrons. The D subshell has five orbitals, and again, only two electrons per orbital, so two electrons times five orbitals equals 10 total electrons. The F subshell has seven orbitals, two electrons per orbital, so two times seven equals 14 total electrons. Now back to the periodic table to refresh on the S, P, D, and F blocks. The alkali and alkali earth metals, as well as helium, since it has so few electrons, are referred to as the S block. The nonmetals are referred to as the P block. The transition metals in the middle are referred to as the D block. And the lanthanide and actinides down below are referred to as the F block. These are the letters in electron configuration. So now let's try our first example with fluorines. I'm going to start by writing its chemical symbol, F, in a colon. And then I'm just going to count from the top left corner of the periodic table, 1s1, 1s2, and write that since only two electrons can fit in the S subshell. And then I'll go to 2s1, 2s2, and again, only two electrons, so I'll go ahead and write 2s2. And then 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, and 2p5, and we landed on fluorine, so we're done. So I'll write 2p5. So as you can see, 2 plus 2 plus 5 equals 9 total electrons. Now let's do valence electron configuration, which shows only the valence electrons. So we'll start the same way by writing the chemical symbol in a colon, and then we go to the previous period's noble gas, which is helium, and we'll write that noble gas in a bracket, and then all we have to do is write the highest energy level electrons, 2s2 and 2p5, and that's it. That's valence electron configuration, and you'll see that 2 plus 5 equals 7, valence electrons. So to summarize, the full electron configuration of fluorine looks like this. There are two core electrons in the 1s subshell and seven valence electrons in the 2s and 2p subshells. So counting them 2 plus 2 plus 5 will get nine total electrons. The valence electron configuration of fluorine looks like this. And as you can see, there's two plus five, making seven valence electrons. Let's try another example. How about silicon, which has 14 total electrons? So we'll start the same way, write its chemical symbol in a colon. And just like before, start counting from the top left until we land on silicon. So we have 1s1, 1s2. 
2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we hit the third energy level, which is where silicon is. So 3s1, 3s2, and then 3p1, and 3p2. So you can see 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 2 is 14 total electrons. Now let's do the valence electron configuration for silicon. So just like before, we take the noble gas in the previous period, write the chemical symbol for silicon with the colon, and then that noble gas in a bracket, and then we take the highest energy electrons, which is 3s2 and 3p2, and we'll write that because silicon is in the third energy level. So those will indicate the valence electrons. So there you have it. That's the valence electron configuration for silicon. To summarize on silicon's electron configuration, it looks like this. There are 10 core electrons in the 1s, 2s, and 2p subshells, and there are four valence electrons in the 3s and 3p subshells. So adding up all the superscripts, we'll get 14 total electrons. Silicon's valence electron configuration looks like this. And adding up the superscripts, we get four valence electrons. So now let's try an example a little bit deeper into the periodic table. How about rubidium, which has 37 total electrons? So I'll go ahead and write the chemical symbol for rubidium with the colon after it. And then I'll start counting from the top left of the periodic table. So 1s1, 1s2, and write that. 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4s1, 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 4p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And finally, 5s, 1. So you can count all of these electrons up to see that there are 37 total electrons. And for the valence electron configuration, we'll go to the previous noble gas, which is krypton. We'll start by writing the chemical symbol for rubidium with the colon, and then write krypton, the noble gas, inside of a bracket. And then we'll take the highest energy level electrons, which is only 5s1, and rewrite that. And there you have it. That's the valence electron configuration for rubidium, meaning it has one valence electron. And to summarize, rubidium's electron configuration looks like this. It has 36 core electrons and one valence electron in its 5s subshell. Adding up all the superscripts in the core subshells as well as the valence subshell, we'll get a total of 37 electrons. Rubidium's valence electron configuration looks like this, and as you can see it only has one electron, meaning one valence electron. Simple as that.